Well, welcome back to another episode of Pain Society. Now in this episode, well, things did not go according to plan originally with this beautiful Acura NSX, but we're gonna take care of that all in this episode. We're gonna show you how we're gonna match the paint and how we're gonna blend it effectively to make this beautiful NSX look like one color again. Now the next step is going to be getting this whole front end sanded down with a 600 grit. Now by using a 600 grit, we're giving it enough scratch so that the paint can stick on top. We're gonna to be using our K600. Now our K600 is gonna give us the cutting speed of a 320, but it's still gonna leave that 600 grit scratch. And I really like to use that on blending panels because it doesn't take as long to sand it. And it also gives us the scratch that we're going to need for that paint to stick. And what we're also gonna be doing right after this is we're gonna go and find the little different pinholes or little chips and we're gonna fill them using a UV primer. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Now when it comes to filling little chips, there's two different types on the market that you can use from Colad. And I purchased these off Amazon myself and I really love them. Now there is a coarse one and there is a fine one. I find that the fine one it just fills in the little chip much easier. Now the reason why you want to use a UV spot putty is because you can cure it in just seconds with a UV light. Or if you don't have a UV light, you can leave it out in the bright sun and it will cure in a few moments as well. And what you really want to stay away from is combi putty, 1K putties. These will shrink and it will cause you more issues than you know. Now the UV putties, they will not shrink and they will stay in the chip. And we're gonna take a look at some of those chips right now. So if you look at this chip right here, you can see that that is the primer underneath from when it was painted before. So this is a decent chip, but we don't wanna to put too much primer all over the vehicle. And if we look here, there is another chip. There's about five chips throughout the hood and maybe a couple on the fenders. And usually what you would have to do is sand down that chip, feather it out, and then prime it. But we don't have a whole lot of real estate on this actual hood or area for blending. And we really wanna keep that area small. We know with yellow, well, it doesn't cover that well. So if we can minimize to just filling the chip, guess what? You can actually paint right over it. It locks in. It's never going to actually uh, shrink into that chip itself so you'll be good to go. So let me show you how we do it. So what you want to do is get yourself a new razor blade and you're going to put just a little bit on. It does not take a whole lot of that putty. Okay, just a little bit. Now this putty will not actually dry until you UV cure it. So it's going to be fine. You can have a little working time with it. And basically for something just this small, one thing that you do not want to do is overfill it because that can create issues. And once you get it on there, clean it up a little bit. And this stuff is transparent, so it might seem like it's not filled, but once we cure it, then it's going to be nice and smooth. Now, look at this area. You want to make sure that this area is nice and smooth where the filler is because it might not seem like it's too much, but this is actually building and that can leave you with a square once you go to paint. And you wanna make sure you get all of the excess film completely sanded off so it only leaves what's left inside of the chip. So let's cure it real quick. Now these UV lights can be pretty expensive, but uh, you can still use the sun to do the same thing. So we're gonna give it about one, two, three, four, five, six and then we'll go ahead and check it out. And that's completely nice and dry. Now I'll show you how we sand it. Now we have our 600 grit from before and we're just gonna go over it. And we can see with just with that sanding, this is now completely filled. It doesn't have any dip or like with that regular 1K putty, you would be able to feel the edge. And guys, that only took about 30 seconds to do. And this is completely ready for paint. We don't need to prime it and then lose our uh, valuable real estate. So now we'll go ahead and fix up those other chips on the hood and we'll continue on the project.
Now that everything's been sanded, we're gonna be using this K600 on a hand pad. It's the same sandpaper from before, but it's on this little soft pad, and we're gonna use this along all of the edges. And what I like about this is the amount of control that you can have. So you can get right up to the edge, and since it's square, it makes it a lot easier to make sure you really sand that edge nice and good. And these are the areas that you don't wanna hit with the sander because they can burn through. If you do this by hand, you're gonna have way more control than you would with a DA sander. And this is the most important area right here because this area matches our door and we do not wanna put color at this edge because then it won't match. That's the whole purpose of what we're doing here, the blend. So we just wanna lightly scuff it you don't need to go aggressive, just dole it out just enough so that the paint sticks, remember we're using a K600 here, and a K600 is all we're gonna need, and that paint's gonna stick. This is just gonna be clear in this area anyways. All right, that out about to do it. Let's go ahead and get this thing washed down. And just like that, we are back into the spray booth. We got our sanded down bumper that originally does not match. That is the bottom portion. You can see the difference in the colors here. And we have the actual vehicle itself. Now, of course, we have everything sanded in that 600 grit. I decided to do the paper in the front and then the plastic in the back. Sometimes the paper will conform a little bit easier to the wheel wells. And since the car is a little bit more square, I was able to cut it and get a nice clean tape job. So these are very important things when trying to get a nice clean paint job, making sure that you have your tape all nice and secure and your plastic is nice and secure. Also, a couple other things that will help is having that clean environment. Now you can see that we do have the Like90 uh, pig mat in the booth here and that is exclusive to Like90, the green pig mat. And before we go ahead and start painting, I went ahead and brought in the vacuum cleaner and the pig mat really holds down the dirt, but it does need to be vacuumed. It's suggested to vacuum it daily. So by vacuuming it, you really get all that dirt up and dirt that could be into your paint job. Now, the actual pig mat is not going to save your paint jobs if you do not take the time to really have a clean booth, a clean environment, a clean person, a clean car. You know, the pig mat's just not gonna come in here and be the savior, but you have to do all these different elements and all these elements put together will get you and yield you a cleaner paint job. Now, once we did the vacuuming, then we're using a, a dust control, a particle control, and what I'd like to do with this is, before every paint job or in the beginning of the day, just go around the booth and spray down the particle control. You don't need to have the green pig mat to do this. You can spray it on the walls, your booth stands, anything like that will really help keep the environment clean and hold down the dust so you're gonna have less buffing in the end. And something I really wanted to mention to you guys, and I don't want you to be confused. If you have a bumper that does not match, that does not mean do something like this each and every time. We have to understand that the car here is a classic car, and we need this color to be perfect. We need this color to match, and if I were to paint and tint this color again and it doesn't match, I'm wasting my time. So you have to know your clientele, you have to discuss with the customer the options, and this is not only a blend job, but we are fixing those hood uh, chips and different scratches along the area. So we're freshening it up. And really, we do have enough area for blend, so it is good that we can keep it contained. So don't go spraying all the front end if you can't get a color to match. Spend a little time with the color. If it's a regular old car, get it good enough, and it should be able to go out the door, or even if it's for yourself, don't get involved. This situation is a little bit different. We're ready to start spraying some paint, and let's start laying it down and give you a couple tips and tricks along the way so this comes out really nice. And before we spray, I wanna use a brand new tack rag. You don't need any residues from an old tack rag getting on your fresh paint that you just prepped. So you're gonna lightly go over it, and like I've mentioned in my videos, you're gonna go over it as if you were spraying it. And you really wanna feel the paint. You really wanna feel it as you go. This will be your last case scenario where you can really feel if there's any bumps or anything on the paint that you really need to sand or give some attention to. So everything I'm doing is the motion of painting. I'm getting in the rhythm of painting. I'm seeing how my body is going to be oriented by the vehicle so I don't touch the vehicle, but I can maximize my arm span and get the paint gun where I want it to be. 
So I'm getting familiar with the vehicle right now just by doing this. Next up, we're gonna be applying a blending additive. Now, I don't necessarily use this blending additive for what it's intended for, but I use it more for a visual aid to see how my color is looking. Usually you would use this to blend out the paint, but I'm gonna put it on first and I like to see to determine is my base blending well? Because this puts a certain type of sheen on the paint that mimics the base coat and I'll be able to tell. We're gonna be using our DV1 here, 1.3. Let's lay down our clear blending additive. We're only gonna do it on the front end here. We're not gonna do it on the bumpers. After about five minutes, we're gonna be using the DV1. We have our base coat in there. Now this is a tri coat, meaning it's gonna get the base and then it's gonna get the pearl. So this is an interesting paint job. We're gonna be go ahead and we're gonna hit up the areas that we put a little bit of primer on first. We'll allow that to flash. Then we'll hit up our bumpers, coat them entirely because the color's off. And then we'll bounce back to the actual car and we're gonna recoat the whole entire hood and lose the color over in the end of the fenders. Now we just put that first coat of base you saw. Now I noticed a little bit that my primer was a little bit see-through-ish. You can still see through to it. So I put a couple more coats on. Now I could have sealed initially, but we're dealing with a small amount of real estate and blend area, and I did not want to introduce sealer into the mix. And here's what I mean by that, guys. This is untouched territory, and I've got color all the way into this area. I'm playing with fire right now, but I still have to get my coverage in this area because I got a couple chips that we fixed. And remember, if this was a true blend, we would only take our color probably into this area, but then we would have clear coat over chips. And for this type of car, that is not acceptable, not an acceptable repair. Over on this side, a little bit more fire we're playing with because we had a dent in this area and our base came into this area. Now, it looks like our color, since we adjusted it, it's looking like it's blending fairly well, but still, we wanna keep the paint off of that tape. That'll be a good indication that our color is still going to match. Of course, it's business as usual for these two bumper covers, or one bumper cover and split in half. And now that it's been drying, I'm gonna give it its last coat before we hit up our pearl.
And that's after 15 minutes of drying. This is officially ready for the pearl. Now when we do the pearl, I'm gonna carry the pearl just a little bit further, literally a touch further. I don't want it to go all the way to the edge because that can also change the color. The pearl on this particular um, car and this color is very yellow. It actually has some of the toners from the face coat. So it can really change the color if we are not careful. On the bottom lower portion here, obviously I've painted everything and then I'll come back with the black trim after and I'll paint that. It just makes it look a lot nicer rather than trying to tape it off. Bumper's good, looks like it's gonna match. So let's go ahead and start spraying our pearl. I'm gonna spray two coats pretty much back to back. I'll do the whole front end. I'll move towards the uh, bumpers and then I'll come back again. I'll shoot the front end again and come back here. So let's roll with that. It's all pearled up. I'm letting it dry for 20 minutes. Really get all the solvents out because we don't want to trap them with the clear coat. You can see it looks really good over here. I'm liking the color. It's looking like it's gonna be a perfect match. Obviously it is. You know, you want to make sure you have enough coats of base on it. And you can see how the pearl kind of changed it a little bit. How it's got that green sheen to it. All right, so we're gonna be using a little bit of an oldie, but one of the best clear coat guns ever. And you might have already guessed it, the LPH 400. One of the best guns for clear coat. In fact, I don't use it too much because it just lays the clear coat down too smooth and too flat, and it doesn't match the factory. But this NSX has a very flat finish, and that's what I intend to give to this NSX, a beautiful flat finish. Now to adjust it, back out this fluid control knob, hold down this trigger, and then once it's just about out, you can turn it back to the right clockwise. And once you get to the point where it stops, it's at wide open. I like to run it right around wide open. The fan, back it all the way out to the left. And there's a couple different tricks for this particular finish that I want. I want to run it in around a quarter, but I also have a video on how to adjust your fan so that you can get a nice, completely flat finish. Now on this particular car, I do want a little bit of a bigger fan because I am running more panels and I want to cover a little bit more um, real estate at one time. So let's go ahead and let's start applying that first coat of clear coat.
After that first coat, we're gonna give it a 10 minutes and I'm gonna flash it at 115 degrees. So if you're at home, just give it a little bit longer than that so it can really tack up. Man, that first coat's looking really smooth, just the way I want it. I never want my first coat to look like dead flat, but I want it to look pretty smooth so that when that second coat goes on, it's going to really bite into it and smooth out just the way I want. So I'll give it just a little bit more and then we're gonna go ahead and lay down to the second coat, but no three coats. We don't wanna do three coats. We could, but sometimes we get a little build up on the edges. I don't want that. So just keep that in mind when it comes down to two or three coats. If you need the third coat, give a little bit more time between the second and third, more than you did between the first and the second. Let's lay it down. Uh, here it is guys been 15 minutes it's been starting to dry already we're not hitting the heat i want it to naturally dry look at that finish out of the whole job guys i only got about one piece of dirt you can catch it in the light right there this thing came out clean it's because of the preparation we took can't just pull a car in the booth wipe it down and hope for a clean paint job. You have to be in control of your paint jobs. The blend's looking pretty good as well. Definitely looking pretty good. Over on the lower trim here, I'll do the black accent pieces. I always like to paint it in full and do the black after. That's the main problem right here, this guy. This is the reason for all of this work, but we're gonna allow this to dry and then we'll go ahead and pull her out. <laughs> 